Ah, we're back for another installment of <sighs> stupidity in the game of spirit. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different. Um, this is going to have a little bit of news and how I feel about it and how some people in the game of spirit, uh, YouTube, video gaming in general, have been acting a little stupid about it. So, um, I'll be covering the big three. Um, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. Not in that order. Um, flip Microsoft and Sony. Sony, Microsoft, then Nintendo. Um, after the cut. Let's start with Sony. <laughs> Cause why not? Sony hasn't been doing too well lately. <laughs> They haven't been too well. They released their financials just a few days ago, and we have discovered that uh, things have been going pretty badly. Even the game division is a little bit short. Almost half a billion dollars, 439 million. Um, <clears throat> which shows one simple thing. Even the PlayStation 4 doing well ain't doing shit for Sony right now. They're hemorrhaging money from all orifices. Which is not good for Sony. Um, <clears throat> it's gotten so bad that Kaz Hirai is hiring outside help to help get them back on track. A uh, Silicon Valley lawyer named Jonathan Bruce who helped Mitsubishi and Hyundai um, when they were going through rough patches. Um, the stupidity of this is that I don't think Jonathan Bruce can help I really don't. The problem with Sony is uh, threefold, okay? Sony is so damn big that it's it's like a fat guy who's so large that his org like his body can't handle the weight. Sony is so big that and so many different divisions are, are underperforming or just tanking completely that it's like for years, they could they could they could um, do transfusions from the stronger parts of Sony to the weaker parts of Sony. We saw this last uh, console generation, PS3. PS3 was tanking. Sony could take money from better performing divisions and make it look like the PS3 wasn't as bad, wasn't doing as badly as it was. But it's time to pay the piper. I mean, you, I mean, you can't be that big and corpulent and just can't get around unhealthy and let things get, get past. The second reason Sony has been doing so poorly is because for years, uh, this uh, double accounting and hiding losses through strange manipulation of sales numbers, um, you know, you were they were basically creating false profits. Um, and um, false, false profits, which basically meant that somewhere someone was counting on money, units sold producing a certain amount of money that was not actually being made because it was false accounting, which in turn led to even more debt and losses. Third, Sony was spending money like a sailor on holiday trying to keep up with Microsoft. The thing is, Microsoft can spend money... Microsoft has God money, okay? They can spend money and buy a country if they want to. Sony can't. Not really. Um, they wish they could, but they can't. Um, to, to really illustrate this, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a few facts. Fact. 15 years ago, Sony was worth $600 billion, um, and they had, like, maybe, like, 10 to $15 billion of debt, which for a, com for a company that was, that's worth $600 billion and was pulling down huge amounts of revenue, that's, like, nothing. Um, it's like making $200,000 a year and having $10,000 of debt. That's really, really, that that's, like, two major credit cards. That's nothing. Two or three major credit cards. But anyway, so Sony basically um, 
basically went from having that much net worth. So net worth basically means total amount of assets, money in the bank, how much their IPs, uh, intellectual IPs, technological IPs, patents, products, everything. Six hundred billion. That's a hefty sum of money. To now, Sony is worth like between one hundred and at the at the most one hundred ninety-eight billion. Um, if you ask Sony apologists, all the way down to one hundred and sixty-three billion, with a debt of one hundred and twenty-eight to one hundred and thirty-six billion dollars. So basically, Sony is one or two fuck ups away from being more in debt than how much money they actually make, which basically means that Sony is in danger of having to declare bankruptcy, even in Japanese law, uh, Japanese bankruptcy law, which means Sony can't afford to fuck up. They can't afford to fuck up. They can't. They cannot afford. They cannot, like, they don't have, like, they, they can't afford to fuck up. They can't. And even though the PS4 has been selling phenomenally, like Sony drones have been saying, it's still their 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 gaming uh, uh, their game division, their their Sony Entertainment division, still uh, their PlayStation division still posted a loss. So yeah, one hundred sixty-one dollars of profit, they still posted a loss. So yeah, Sony is not doing too well right now. Which is sad because, despite what many um, trolls who come to my channel may, may tell you, I actually am a Sony um, supporter. I'm not a Sony fan, I'm a Sony supporter because I support Sony in the best way possible. I buy their products, or I did. Um, I have a Sony sound system in my bedroom that's like top of the line five years ago. Bought that. Um, bought it from my parent from my parents house when I moved out to this house here uh, when I bought this house um, I have a PS1 PS2 and PS3 um, well over three over 100 games for the PS1 and PS2 and well over um, 200 games like almost over 250 games for the PS3 um, so and that includes digital um, and I'm probably going to get a PS4 this Christmas or Black Friday, whichever comes first. So, yeah, I support Sony, but I'm not going to lie or stick my head in the sand. You know, it's not happening. It's not happening. Sony is fucked. <laughs> okay. And they need to get themselves together. And there's only three ways I can see to do it. One, Sony is going to have to get rid of... They might just have to declare bankruptcy and get rid of everything that's underperforming and not selling well. A lot of people are going to get fired. And Sony's just going to maybe have to go back down to three, four divisions. Electronics, the PlayStation division, um, maybe their patents, their, their music division, and maybe the movie division. And that's it. All that other shit's going to have to go. Um, the other way they can save themselves is if they come out with something that's going to make them a lot of money huge cash infusion. Um, I'm thinking maybe a merger with another company, a ja another Japanese company, but I don't know of any Japanese company that would want to fucking, because if you buy Sony, you're going to have to buy their debt, and that's $128 billion. That's $128 to $136 billion of debt, and I don't know who the hell's going to buy that, plus the, like, the 198 between 198 and 168 billion dollars to buy Sony. I don't know who the fuck's gonna pay that. I don't I don't know who would buy that. The only company that I know in the same type of stuff as Sony that would spend money to buy that would have to be either Apple or Microsoft. And I don't see Microsoft buying Sony. I think Microsoft would rather see Sony drown in a pool of their own piss than <laughs> give them a hand to help them out of the, the hole that they've dug themselves in. Third example is if Sony did a major, major, major overhaul. I'm talking clean house and just went back to basics, but I don't see that happening because they would still need a huge cash infusion. 
and I mean, seeing how they've been doing right now, I don't know what bank would give them a loan to help them get out of this hole. And it would have to be huge. It'd have to be like hundred billion dollars. And I don't see anyone doing that because there's no guarantee you'll get you'll make your money back um, with interest. So Sony's kind of fucked right now. Now for Microsoft. Microsoft. <laughs> well, um, uh, two weeks ago, Microsoft had their quarterly earnings, and they basically, well, not their quarterly earnings, but they basically had a big memo where they th decided that because the, the Xbox One is selling abysmally, um, that they were going to um, <clears throat> um, halt shipments. So there's like warehouses of Xbox Ones just hanging out. Um, this, pr this precursor move um, precluded a more important move that they made this week where they basically have now started selling a connectless Xbox One. And a lot of people have been applauding them for this. They've also been applauding Microsoft for no longer putting Netflix and Hulu behind a paywall. Um, to these people who are applauding Microsoft for dropping the Kinect and no longer having Netflix and Hulu behind a paywall, I ask one question. Why are you applauding Microsoft for this? This is something they should have done, okay? Applauding Microsoft for not putting Netflix and Hulu behind a paywall and not bundling, not forcing you to pay for a a hundred dollar peripheral that most people don't want to use. Most gamers don't want to use the Kinect. Most developers don't want to develop for the Kinect. <laughs> so why are you bundling it with your console when people... Like, here's the thing. I could see if, like, okay, if Microsoft had just introduced the Kinect in the Xbox One generation and people said, ah, I'm not sold on it, I don't like it. And you could say, okay, they, they didn't know. They had the 360 generation for gamers to say, we don't like the Kinect, we don't want it, and they still tried to cram it down people's throats. And people said, no, they weren't buying the Kinect. They saw those sales figures and they said, oh, we've got warehouses full of these fucking things. And they finally decided to drop the Kinect. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Okay? People saying, well, Netflix and Hulu aren't behind a paywall anymore. Yay! Motherfucker, Netflix and Hulu aren't supposed to be behind a paywall. Let me put it this way. I can watch Netflix on my smartphone, on my Wii U, on my on my on my 3DS, on my Wii, on my computer, on my smart TV. So on my PS3 for free. So why the fuck would Xbox be special? Why the fuck should Microsoft be special and put their shit behind a paywall? I mean, really, what? <laughs> Are you fucking retarded? <laughs> that's, that's not special. Basically, people applauding Microsoft for dropping the paywall behind Netflix and Hulu is like applauding someone who says, Man, I didn't go to jail. Motherfucker, you're not supposed to go to jail in the first place. Dumbass. <laughs> so, and as far as the connect goes, oh god, Jesus. Oh, give me strength. Okay. Let's break this down, okay? The connect was a peripheral that people didn't like. Most people, I have friends who have an Xbox 3, who have an Xbox 360 and bought a Kinect. Half of my friends returned, like, sold that shit to GameStop. Like, you can go to GameStop and buy a Kinect for, like, 30 bucks for the Xbox 360. You can go to, I'm pretty sure that with the Kinect 2.0 for the Xbox One, in about a year, you'll be able to get because they're probably going to sell the connect 2.0 it's a separate peripheral you'll find some people who are going to buy a connect just to see what it's about and return that shit to gamestop they'll be on sale used for like 69 bucks why no one likes the connect 
No one likes it. It's not perfected. It doesn't work very well. You spend all this money on a peripheral that doesn't even fucking work. Right? Here's the thing, okay? Nintendo had the motion control, the Wii mode, which was for simplified movements worked perfectly. For more pinpoint movements, they had the Wii Motion Plus, which worked pretty damn well. But you're gonna make a Kinect 2.0 and that shit still doesn't work. The same problems that you had with the original Connect is working with the Connect 2.0. And you're gonna charge people extra for this? So, you've got a console that's weaker than its competitors, but more expensive with a peripheral that people don't want. Really? Really. Tell you the truth, I think they should have dropped the price of the Kinect of the uh, Xbox One even more. I think it should have been 350 Because really, I mean, let's be frank, it's weaker than the PS3. Um, it's not really, I mean, it's not worth $400. I'm sorry, it's not worth it. Really, you should just take $500 and get a Steam box <laughs> at this point. That's just my opinion. I could be. After the cut, we'll get to Nintendo fans. Okay then, here we go. Nintendo fans who say that Nintendo needs to drop the gamepad. Okay, I'm gonna break this down to you, okay? I have a friend, he has a PS4, I have another friend, he has an Xbox One. I've played the must-have games thus far in both of them. Titanfall, it's fun, it's eh, it's fun, but it's not my type of game. Um, Infamous Second Son, it's fun, but eh, it's the same shit that we had last gen. Um, with slightly prettier, prettier graphics, nothing Ooh, ground shaking. Let me put it this way. Um, none of the games that are out on the PS4 and Xbox One feel the, give you the same feeling as the Mario 64 versus Super Mario World for the SNES. The SNES from the N64 jump. You're not seeing that level of, oh my god, this is gorgeous. You're not. Or N64 graphics to GameCube graphics. You're not seeing that jump. You're seeing a very minuscule jump. I think even once developers get a real handle on the architecture of these machines and really start pushing them to their limits, you're not going to see a huge jump. I'm sorry. So, for you Nintendo fans to tell Nintendo, oh, you need to drop the gamepad, let me tell you something, and, and drop the price to $199. Look, listen. Without the gamepad, the Nintendo Wii U is like a Wii, a Super Wii, like the Super Nintendo to the Nintendo. The only difference is that Nintendo has like the highest tier first party games in the video game industry, so they have that edge, but there's no other edge for them. The only system right now that actually offers next gen gameplay and when I say next gen, I don't mean just graphics, although the graphics on the Wii U are fucking gorgeous compared to the Wii. I'm talking about new ways to play games. Is the Wii U. You're not getting it from the Xbox One because they've dropped the Kinect, and it wasn't being used anyway, so fuck it. <laughs> and technically speaking, the Kinect was used last gen too, so there's nothing next gen about the Xbox One. And I know what some people are going to say. Well, what about the cloud servers? Let me tell you something. I work and live in the D.C. metropolitan area. Um, if you go into the city, there is a lot of Wi-Fi going on. And if you go into the government area, there's a lot of cloud-based servers and stuff. You still need an astoundingly good uh, internet infrastructure in order for cloud servers to work. 
The problem is that only about 10 to 12 percent of the entire United States of America has the internet infrastructure to support cloud servers. So the whole Microsoft, the power of the cloud, is bullshit. It was never, literally, if the Xbox One came out 10 years in the future, and they said the power of the cloud is going to enable you, then it would make sense. Now, it's just a bullshit marketing term to make people feel better about their purchase. And Sony... <laughs> Sony is full of shit from the opposite direction. Basically, Sony system has more power than the PlayStation and than the Xbox One, but it's very unstable. The Xbox One has less power, it's more stable. The PS4, more power, but very unstable. So both of these systems have major issues. Which leads me to back to the faux Nintendo fan. So basically, you have the Xbox One, which really should be called the Xbox 600 because it's like a souped-up Xbox 360. You have the PS 3.5, I mean, the PS 4, which really is like a PS, a souped-up PS 3 with different architecture, with x86 architecture, which sounds really cool until you realize that x86 architecture just means that the shit is basically a laptop. You're playing a laptop. You're playing a shitty. You're playing, and not even a good laptop gaming gaming PC. A shitty. One. Okay. You have a shitty laptop gaming PC when you're dealing with these two next gen top of the line consoles. The Wii U, however, are, utilizes a different type of architecture, which is very different. Um, very different very different. And I doubt you could play the types of games that are coming out on the Wii U on a fucking PC. Which it now makes the Wii U the only next-gen console in existence. So, for you so-called Nintendo fans, or faux fans, that say Nintendo needs to drop the gamepad, why? It's the only only next-gen console left. And Nintendo is going to bring the pain. Coming, come this, come this E3. So, stay tuned to my video coming up about that. Uh, so, stay tuned for the conclusion of this rather long stupidity in the game of spirit. Okay then. Now for the conclusion. Basically, as the title says, in conclusion, everyone's been having a bad time. Um, Sony's bleeding from every orifice, including their ass, money-wise. Um, Microsoft had to bow to the reality that people don't fucking like the Kinect or the useless-ass paywalls that Microsoft has been using for the last eight, nine, ten years to nickel and dime the shit out of uh, their loyal customers. Why you would be a loyal com customer to a company that nickel and dimes the shit out of you for things that you already pay for. <laughs> I'll never understand, but, you know, Xbox fans, I'll never get them. Sony fans who have been stupidly saying, as long as it doesn't affect the PlayStation division, the PlayStation division's making money. Look, listen, okay? Philip Morris owns, um, Kraft, okay? And Taco Bell and, um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. If Philip Morris goes bankrupt, those two, Kraft and Taco Bell and... KFC go down too. Even if Taco Bell and Kraft and um, KFC do astoundingly well, it doesn't matter because their parent company went fucking bankrupt. Unless someone buys them. And I doubt someone's gonna buy them. Someone might buy those companies. But, I mean, someone would have to buy the PlayStation division. And I don't know who would want to buy that monstrosity because it's not profitable. It's still not profitable. 
it made 161 million since the release of the PS4, and they still, it's not profitable, which tells you something about Sony's business model. It's unsustainable. Nintendo fans, faux Nintendo fans who claim that they, now with Microsoft dropping the Kinect, that Nintendo should drop the gamepad and play and just can use a pro controller. Look, listen. The gamepad is innovative. The Kinect 2.0 was not. Okay, it's the same shit as the original Kinect, only a little bit better, still kind of shitty and not perfected. Okay? <sighs> Telling Nintendo to drop the gamepad is like going to Nintendo during the N64 days and saying, hey, you guys should drop that funky N64 controller because <laughs> I don't want to use that. I want to use the same shit we were using during the SNES days. That's basically what you're saying. Or fuck that GameCube controller. No, 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 no. I want to use the N64 controller. Or fuck that Wiimote. I want to use my GameCube thing. And for a lot of games, you could. Nintendo bowed on that. The GameCube gamepad, the gamepad for the Wii U is innovation, okay? And we're going to see some shit done for it that's going to blow your mind on E3. <sighs> Stay tuned for my E3 um, special coming tomorrow. I've got some stuff to say, and it's going to get pretty raw. So, stay tuned.